Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Phone Arena with one of the more notable handsets in recent memory, the Pico Projector Laden Samsung Galaxy B. We handled the first Samsung phone with a Pico Projector back in 2009 and then uh, we had in 2010 the other Galaxy Beam with a 6 lumen projector and uh, its air here is uh, with 15 lumen which is uh, what standalone Pico projectors like uh, case slip-ons for the iPhone 4 and 4S carry as well but here we have it integrated here in the phone itself it's uh, graced with jolly orange colors here on the side and uh, is sure to attract attention as if it's a regular flashy teen oriented phone for the color choice alone here on the sides the phone is fairly chubby uh, but with a sturdy build and uh, by no means overly thick at uh, half an inch 12.5 millimeters considering what's inside it's uh, also not very heavy uh, a bit about 5 ounces 145 grams in fact it feels and handles very well in the hand thanks to the ergonomic tapered back here with uh, patterned no slippery soft touch plastic very nice to the touch the only thing that hints at uh, the phone's extraordinary capabilities is this slight pouch here above the 5 megapixel camera lens which houses the pico projector there's an on off switch here on the right hand side for the projector you just uh, long press it and turn the projector on and then back off again the power lock key is below it and there's a micro sd card slot very easy to access and swap your memory cards on the fly the phone has uh, 8 gigabytes of internal memory otherwise here on the left we have the other easy to access slot for the sim card so basically you don't have to open the phone and the phone's back cover except for swapping the battery because uh, samsung supplies a spare 2000 milliampere hours battery in the box the left also houses the volume rocker and the audio jack all the keys are very easy to feel and press with good feedback including this honky underneath the display here the handset's 4-inch LCD screen is with uh, 480 by 800 pixels of resolution pretty decent for this 4-inch uh, size it sports shiny vivid colors and good viewing angles but could use a little bit more anti-reflectance coating for easier sunlight legibility outside despite that it's uh, 400 nits of brightness are above average the 233 pixel density is quite good and ensures there are no nasty surprises with pixelation as you can see we won't be spending too much time showing you the touch with over gingerbread overlay because you've seen it uh, numerous times in other Samsung Android handsets it runs very fluid here with the dual core 1 gigahertz ST Ericsson Nova Thor processor which has a Mali 400 graphics integrated overall no complaints uh, from the interface behavior the phone has uh, 768 megabytes of RAM and uh, 8 gigabytes of internal memory of which uh, about 4 gigabytes are user accessible uh, let's uh, have a look at the video player it's important because you want to be projecting those uh, movies with it it's uh, the usual touch with video player that supports movies up to HD resolution with uh, DivX x support right out of the box let's have a look at uh, the music player also the usual touch with music player with uh, songs and albums categorization by artists as well a couple of equalizer presets the phone by the way has uh, a very potent loudspeaker strong with crisp sound which comes in handy when you're projecting somewhere and finally let's have a look at uh, the browser 
we can adjust uh, the browser brightness directly from its interface. Let's try and visit Phone Arena. Pretty comfortable keyboard. Easy to type with uh, one hand on this uh, four inch screen. As you can see, the pixel density is enough, so even when completely zoomed out, you can still tell some of the titles. Double tap works fairly well, panning around to zooming. Overall, no complaints from the default gingerbread browser here on the Samsung Galaxy Beam. Of course, you have full Adobe Flash support. Text reflow, the usual great Android browser we have on the Samsung Galaxy Beam. When all you're most interested in the software, the app that manages the Pico projector, so we're gonna go through its options one by one. The first one is for adjusting focus and rotation. At uh, the various distances you can project uh, from, you will need different amounts of focus. So with this slider, you moving the motor inside the Pico projector and it adjusts the focus. You can rotate the picture. So if it's portrait uh, on the phone to be landscape on the wall in front of you and so on. This quick path function is pretty awesome. You have a pointer with uh, which you can do presentations, attract the audience attention to something and uh, you can change the type of pointers to let's say a paper plane to spice things up or you can draw directly on the screen here depending on what you're projecting and it will be shown uh, on the wall in front of you of the surface you're projecting at. You can erase it, you can choose uh, different thickness for drawing and so on. Pretty great feature. Then comes the visual presenter. It's basically like your uh, write-on projector in school and shows uh, what comes through the 5 megapixel camera lens and projects it uh, on the big uh, surface in front of you. There's ambience mode. Here you can choose uh, to show animation, wallpaper, gallery, video and uh, so on for a certain duration and play some nice background music to create certain atmosphere, which can come in handy at times considering you can blow this picture up to 50 inches on the wall. You have a torch with adjustable brightness and uh, four colors, depending on the LED that is switched on inside the projector. You can set it a blinking speed to attract attention when you're in a storm, for example. And one of the coolest here is breathing. You can set up uh, an alarm for a certain amount of time from now, let's set it for 1425, let's say, or 26 already, and have it uh, be repeated every day with uh, the weather and news shown like that. Okay, we have this one set up for 226, and when the time comes, the phone will unlock the screen and to start projecting on the wall in front of you the current news, the weather, the time and date and so on. There are a couple of settings here for the projector brightness, screen timeout when uh, it should be locked and uh, the initial orientation as well as a few helpful tips and this is the projector app, very helpful. Now just wait for the briefing uh, option to come on. As you can see, it will work even if uh, the phone screen is locked. Now the projector comes on and starts projecting. You can't see it here, of course, but it's projecting. Uh, and you have news, weather, and time and date projected uh, on the wall in front of you when you wake up, for example. Pretty handy. All the usual bells and whistles coming with the transparent interface menu of uh, TouchWiz are present on the Galaxy Beam. 
including uh, Smile Shot and uh, Panorama Mode. As you can see, there's also a couple of uh, the usual scene modes and color effects that come with uh, the TouchWiz camera interface. The pictures came out pretty good, slightly off, uh, more to the yellowish and warmer side than needed, but exhibiting a good amount of detail and a sharp looking photo. Otherwise, indoors, uh, the flash did uh, an average job illuminating from uh, about three feet, the scene, but there were no nasty surprises in terms of uh, shadows or weird white balance. The 5 megapixel shooter with uh, LED flash on the back of the Samsung Galaxy Beam only records video with uh, HD 720p definition, not the 1080p type we'd expect from having a dual core processor. And uh, the video also has this warm yellowish overcast, but the footage is otherwise crisp and it runs with uh, smooth 30 frames per second. It is fascinating how Samsung's researchers managed to stuff all these uh, LEDs inside the small projecting unit in the Galaxy Beam and still achieve a watchable picture that can be blown up to 50 inches as if you carry your own big screen TV in your pocket. Naturally, the resolution and brightness can't replace a TV experience, but uh, under the right circumstances, overall you can definitely enjoy a movie or two on the go together with uh, many other people around you. And uh, that's the Galaxy Beam's key feature. To top it all off, the phone is uh, a very good all-around Android performer with a fairly compact and uh, appealing design, considering what's inside. Moreover, the watch battery comes in handy to deliver excellent endurance in your daily smartphone routine as well. And there's one extra battery in the box. The only big drawback is that the phone doesn't come with the newest uh, Android on board, but uh, ships with Android gingerbread and uh, there's no word from Samsung uh, if and when it will be updated. As for the price, it costs about the same as a high-end Android handset, considering uh, that a separate Pico projector case for your smartphone with the same uh, NHD resolution and 15 lumen specifications costs around uh, $200. The phone actually seems uh, pretty reasonable, with a pretty reasonable price. Oh no, just like in the case of the Nokia 808 Pure view, the Beamer is in a category of its own, a niche device for enthusiasts, yet it carries the better Android OS, also doubling as a normal mid-range smartphone. And next we're expecting from researchers to come up with uh, a phone that is capable of doing holograms, but uh, unfortunately it's probably quite a lot of years off. This was a video review of the Samsung Galaxy Beam from Phone Arena. For more information about this and other handsets, you can visit us at phonearena.com. Thanks for watching.